Hi everybody, welcome back to A Level Biology Help. So in today's video I am going to be going through Required Practical 9 as it is on the Advanced Information for 2022 exams. This practical is an investigation into the effect of a named variable on the rate of respiration of cultures of single-celled organisms. Right, so let's get on with the video. So before we get into the main body of the video, I want to give a quick shout out to Biosnip. If you're anything like me, um, I kind of struggled with the extra reading part of the um, essays for paper three, where if you want to get the higher marks, you have to include extra reading. And Biosnip is an excellent resource for this. So Biosnip provides a free weekly biological newsletter which have has um, topics relevant to the A-level biology syllabus. So as you can see on the screen, it has things like changes to histones causes cancers, which is relevant to your epigenetics um, topic. So you can just add your email in and subscribe to the newsletter and you'll get weekly articles which help you with your extra reading. It is an excellent resource. I highly recommend it. Do you can also read past issues and they have Instagrams where they post um, facts about um, topics relevant to the syllabus. It's really a fantastic resource. So yeah, check out Biosnip. I will provide a link in the description below. So first, I'm just going to give you a bit of background to the practical, so theory behind it. Before watching this, I recommend that you get confident with the respiration content. Um, I've got a video on that, so I will link that in the corner. So most of the time you will be using yeast in this practical, which is a single celled organism. You, you, yeast is often used in these experiments because it is um, cheap. It, um, you can get a lot of it and also it respires aerobically and anaerobically, so you can investigate both types of respiration. So during respiration, electron transfer takes place, as I'm sure you know. And this electron transfer process reduces NAD plus to NADH and also indirectly helps to produce ATP through the um, Kepmey osmosis process. Again, if you're not confident with this idea, please watch the respiration video. So in order to measure the rate of respiration in this practical, you will use something called methionine blue, or sometimes you might use a compound called DC PIP. And this is a redox indicator dye. So it gives you an idea if redox um, is occurring. So in the practical, you add the methionine blue to a yeast and glucose solution. The glucose solution, you can probably tell already that it's used because glucose is required for respiration. And upon the addition of methionine blue, the colour will change from blue to colourless. This is because the electrons um, transfer during the respiration process um, are accepted by the methionine blue. So the rate at which the um, methionine blue goes from blue to colourless indicates the rate of respiration. So let's look at the method. First, you will add around five centimetres cubed of the yeast and glucose solution to three test tubes. Then you will place them in a 35 degrees Celsius water bath and leave to equilibrate for about 10 minutes. Now, you might be asked in the exam why you have to equilibrate for this amount of time. This is because you want all your test tubes to arrive to the same temperature before the experiment actually starts. You will then add two centimetres cubed of the methionine blue to all three test tubes and start a timer. Now, it is important here that you do not shake the test tubes. This is because you might but via shaking the tubes you might um, introduce oxygen and oxygen is also an electron acceptor so you'll know that it's a terminal electron acceptor but in this case we want methionine blue to accept the electrons because we want to see the rate of respiration so don't shake the tubes then you will measure how long it takes for each of the test tubes to go from blue to colourless and obviously you'll find an average of all the three test tubes. So the 
the main um, dependent variable here is temperature. You might do something different, for example, concentration, but we're using temperature here, and most of the time temperature will be used. So obviously you will repeat the experiment at different temperatures, for example, 40, 50, 60, and 70 degrees Celsius. Now for each of the temperatures, you find the mean average time, so you average all the three test tubes for each temperature. Then you calculate the rate of respiration. I'm going to tell you how to calculate the rate of respiration in a bit. You then plot the graph of rate of respiration against time. And this is the formula for the rate of respiration. It's pretty simple really, it's just 1 divided by the mean time. So here's just a quick risk assessment. It's all the obvious things really. Um, you've got the yeast, which is a biohazard, and people could possibly be allergic to it. Um, obviously, to control that, you would obviously, you know, inform your teacher of your allergies and wash your hands before and after use. Then you've got the common things, so your broken glass, which can cause cuts, so you know, keep away from the bench, take care in handling. Um, something that is unique to this practical or maybe a couple of others actually is the, that the methionine blue can actually cause staining and also it can be an irritant to your eyes so wear eye protection take care and handling etc and also the water from the water bath is hot so it can cause scalding so take care when removing the test tubes from the bath so use tongs when you're doing that so protect you from scalding and wear eye protection so this is a really badly drawn graph by me because I'm not very good at drawing on computers. But here is kind of what your graph should look like. So on the x-axis we've got the temperature, the y-axis we've got the rate of respiration. I haven't had it added any values in because I haven't actually carried out this experiment for the video, obviously because I don't have access to a lab. But this is what the curve should look like. It's kind of your standard... Um, effect of temperature on enzymes graph that you might have seen in the proteins and enzymes section. If you haven't watched that video you can click the link in the corner. So what are the main findings and conclusions from this practical? So if we go back to this graph you can see the optimum temperature is approximately 45 degrees celsius. If the temperature is above optimum, the rate of respiration will decrease due to a decrease in enzyme activity, so because the um, hydrogen bonds in the active site will break, so the enzymes will eventually denature at higher temperatures. So methylene blue takes longer to go from blue to colourless when the temperature deviates from the optimum. which leads to the conclusion that the rate of respiration is reduced when the temperature deviates from the optimum because the methylene blue accepts electrons and um, electron accepting is a process in oxidative phosphorylation. First. So now I'm just going to go through a quick exam question related to this practical. This isn't the exact process that um, I showed you in the video, but it, it is kind of similar and you might get a question like this in the exam. So a student investigated the rate of anaerobic respiration in yeast. She put five grams of yeast into a glucose solution and placed this mixture in the apparatus shown in the figure below. She then recorded the total volume of gas collected every 10 minutes for one hour. So I thought I'd show you this technique. So it's really important that you highlight the important words in the text because you might need to use them in the questions. So I like to highlight words such as anaerobic. And always highlight the numbers because the examiner normally doesn't put numbers in if you they don't want you to use them. So let's look at the first part of the question. Explain why a layer of oil is required in this investigation. And this is a one mark question, so you don't need to write very much. So as you can see in the text of the question, it says they are investigating the rate of anaerobic respiration. 
So we don't want oxygen coming in because that would um, stimulate aerobic respiration. So the oil could be there to prevent the oxygen coming in. So I've written to prevent oxygen being taken up by the yeast because that would indicate aerobic respiration, not anaerobic respiration. So the next part of the question, the student's results are shown in the following table. So here you've got the, um, the time that the volume of glass was collected and the total volume of glass collected. So the question is, first part of this part of the question is calculate the rate of gas production in centimetres cubed per gram per minute during the first 40 minutes of this investigation. Show your working. So if you look at the table, 40 minutes, the volume of gas collected was 3.1 centimetres cubed. And in the te main text of the question, it says she put five grams of yeast. And obviously we need to, the units of this answer are per gram. So we need to first divide 3.1 by five. Also the units are in per minute. And the time that this volume of gas collected was 40 minutes. So we need to provide, divide that number by 40. So 3.1 divided by 5, because we've got 5 grams, divided by 40, because this volume was measured at 40 minutes, leads us to an answer of 0 0.0155. So I've put my answer as 0 0.0155 centimetres cubed per gram per minute. So this is the mark scheme. Um, so part A prevents oxygen being taken up or prevents oxygen entering or prevents oxygen being absorbed. I put that to prevent oxygen being taken up so I would get the mark for this question. Note here that the term oxygen is underlined so you must mention oxygen to get the mark. It also says accept any idea of no contact of oxygen so you don't have to use these exact words, so entering, absorbed, taken up. You just need to get the idea of oxygen not coming in. Neutral for anaerobic respiration or for anaerobic conditions. So the examiner might reward you the mark or they might not, but it's preferable that you um, mention oxygen here because that's a key aspect of aerobic respiration. Prevents entry of air because, you know, air is not just oxygen, obviously and reject prevents entry of oxygen and another named gas. So if you name another gas, so I don't know, carbon dioxide, you won't get a mark because obviously that's not what's taken up in respiration. And the second part of the question, um, 0.0155 or 0.016, which is this number rounded up, you get both marks. So if you just write the answer and you don't put any working out, you still get both marks. Um, I did both anyway, so uh, I'll get both marks. If you write any of these values, you get one mark. So if you've kind of work, worked it out in a feasible way, but you haven't quite got it right, you can still get one mark. So the next part of part B, um, on the left hand side, I've just got the table and the first part of the question. Suggest so why the rate of gas production decreased between 50 and 60 minutes. This is quite a difficult question. Um, things like this normally in experiments show that something is acting as a limiting factor. So I've put, where well you can put something like glucose becomes a limiting factor, um, there are toxins, or I have written that the amount of ethanol increases because you probably know already that ethanol is a product of anaerobic respiration and if um, the amount of, as the experiment goes on obviously there will be more anaerobic respiration so more ethanol will be present so this can become a limiting factor. So the part III, yeast can also respire aerobically so not just anaerobically, this is quite unique. The student repeated the investigation with a fresh sample of yeast and glucose solution, but without the oil. All other conditions remain the same. Explain what would happen to the volume of gas in the syringe if the yeast were only respiring aerobically. 
This is what I have written. I've written that the volume of gas will stay the same. This is because the volume of the oxygen uptake, so now you've got oxygen coming in because um, the oil isn't there. And this becomes equivalent to the volume of carbon dioxide released. So the total volume inside the syringe stays the same. This is quite tricky to wrap your head around, but um, but usually you have an excess of carbon dioxide, but now you've got the um, oxygen coming in. This is equivalent to the volume of CO2, so the total volume is the same. Right, so now on part C. Respiration produces more ATP per molecule of glucose in the presence of oxygen than it does when oxygen is absent. Explain why. So obviously oxygen is part of aerobic respiration and oxidative phosphorylation is a process that only occurs during aerobic respiration and during the presence of oxygen. And oxidative phosphorylation produces a lot of ATP, much more than the processes of you know, glycolysis and link reaction in the Krebs cycle. So oh, oh, sorry. oxidative phosphorylation, which produces most of the ATP, occurs as oxygen is the terminal electron acceptor. The examiner likes it when you use the term terminal electron acceptor rather just than oxygen is present. So this is the Mark scheme. So you can either use glucose decreases or as a limiting factor, increase in ethanol if we put this so we would get the mark. You could put that the yeast dies or you can put toxins build up. You can put any one of these to get the answer to get, get the mark, sorry. You can also put that glucose is used up. For the second part, the first marking point is stays the same or stays level or stays relatively constant. Then the reasoning for that, so the reasoning is where you get your second mark from. So the same volume or amount of oxygen uptake and carbon dioxide release. So we put that so we would get two marks. In part C, first marking point is oxygen is final slash terminal electron acceptor, or you could put that oxygen combines of electrons and protons. We put that oxygen is a terminal electron acceptor, so you would get that mark. Second marking point is that oxidative phosphorylation or the electron transport chain, they're basically the same thing really, provides most of the ATP. Also, you can put that only glycolysis occurs without oxygen and that, um, you know, doesn't produce much ATP. Or you can put that there is no Krebs cycle or there's no link reaction. Right, so that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it useful. Good luck in your exams and I'll see you in the next video.